is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2023 toyota 4runner courtesy of younger toyota in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so there are some big changes for the 2023 4runner including plenty of safety upgrades and in addition to that a new trim level as well so we're going to be going over all those changes of course but not only that this is potentially the most reliable suv ever built this thing has an incredible track record just take a look at consumer reports magazine and it'll give you incredible reliability ratings on the forerunner so not only that you do get two years or twenty-five thousand miles of complimentary maintenance with all new toyotas right now as well so that is also pretty cool but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering full ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2023 toyota forerunner first one being the sr5 starting at thirty-eight thousand eight hundred five dollars which is a fifteen hundred dollar price bump from the 2022 model year in case you were curious trd sport starting at forty one thousand six sixty five sr5 premium for forty one eight sixty five trd off-road for forty two six fifty trd off-road premium for forty five thousand two hundred thirty dollars fortieth anniversary special edition that is a new trim level for 2023 that starts at $46,370 limited for $48,040 and TRD Pro for $53,270 and so for the first three trim levels and the limited as well they all come standard with rear wheel drive all the other trims come standard with four wheel drive but you can add four wheel drive to those first three and the limited if you wanted to do that simply add $1,875 to any of those prices then but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the forerunner is going to be the same and so powering the beast is a four liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 270 horsepower at 5600 rpm 278 pound feet of torque coming in at 4400 rpm power center rear wheels are all wheels through a five speed automatic zero to 60 time approximately eight seconds flat with mpg numbers coming in at 16 in the city 19 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel all right so but now having gotten all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway now let's put the forerunner here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 toyota forerunner here up to speed all right a little bit of a rolling start let's kick it whoa <laughs> yeah that, that's fine honestly for the size of this thing plenty of an acceleration you're not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway or anything like that that was that was perfectly fine definitely no issues there not the quickest thing in the world obviously but it'll get the job done but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so as expected you will find four-wheel ventilated disc brakes coming standard as far as this 60 zero stopping distance goes it's going to come in at 127 feet which is pretty on par for the course in terms of the size of this suv so as far as braking feel goes it's perfectly fine definitely didn't have any issues with that not really a soft braking feel but not a firm braking feel either it's pretty much what you would expect for an suv like the forerunner i'll just put it that way then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent double wishbone type front suspension in the back four link with lateral rod rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars but there are plenty of different options when it comes to the suspension on the forerunner for example x-ray sport enhancement suspension for the trd sport and limited so we do have the trd sport today by the way so wanted to mention that to you guys so that is essentially kind of like an adaptive damping suspension it monitors each shock absorber individually not only adjusting to the road imperfections giving you a smoother ride but also tightening up the suspension during heavy cornering giving you a little bit of handling there as well but it continues there's also a kinetic dynamic suspension system which is optional for the off-road trim level so it doesn't come standard on any particular configuration but it is going to be optional and available for you there trd pro is going to add to that fox high performance shock so a little added off-road performance there there is also a torsen limited slip center differential for the limited four-wheel drive a locking rear differential then for any of the trd trim levels that's going to come standard there and there are trd tuned front springs obviously with the trd pro so like i said plenty of different options available when it comes to the suspension for the forerunner overall as far as ride quality goes it's been 100 on point my short test drive here eggerstown's roads are pretty darn nice but having said that again it's been 100 perfectly fine so definitely ride quality is on point as far as steering feel goes 
weighted 100% on the heavier side of things, which you guys know I personally love. I love a heavy steering feel. Usually with SUVs, a lot of times you will find loosey-goosey steering feels and it doesn't really give you all that much driver feedback or emotion. So the heavier steering feels like this 4Runner, I am a big fan of. Then touching on cabin noise, I am going eh, not that fast right now, maybe 20, 15, 20 miles per hour, but Actually, cabin noise really isn't that bad. There isn't any wind noise whatsoever really coming into the cabin. The road noise is pretty subdued as well. So actually no issues when it comes to cabin noise touching of visibility. I can see perfectly fine out the back. So definitely not gonna have any issues there. Also wanted to mention though, that rear window actually opens and closes. There is actually a power window button located directly behind the shifter. And that's gonna open and close that rear window back there for even added visibility. And quite honestly, the fact that the rear window opens on an SUV is pretty darn cool. You hardly ever find that, so I absolutely love that. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Toyota 4Runner. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2023 Toyota 4Runner finished in Lime Rush, in case you were curious of our exterior color name. I personally love the color on this 4Runner. I think it looks absolutely amazing. But like I said at the beginning of the video, plenty of changes for the 2023 model year. And that big change is the 40th anniversary special edition. Only 4,040 will ever be built to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the 4Runner. So that is pretty cool. You're going to get some tri-color graphics on the sides uh, as well as on the grill. You're going to get bronze 17-inch wheels and some interior modifications then as well. So I did want to emphasize that since we're going to about to touch on the exterior here as always. Let's go ahead and start now for where this thing is actually built because as you know, although Toyota is a Japanese brand, it doesn't mean that it is built in Japan, although the 4Runner is. It's one of the ones that are actually 100% fully JDM. So just wanted to mention that but let's go ahead and start up front full led headlights come standard on every single trim level across the board gotta love that unique front grill for the trd pro and you're going to get some added chrome accents then for the limited front skid plate is going to cover the engine and front suspension that comes standard trd hood scoop for the trd sport i 100 percent love the look of that. I think it looks absolutely amazing. Automatic headlights, of course, do come standard as well, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights, though, also coming standard, and automatic high beams coming standard for all trims as well. Essentially, what that is, is when you have your high beams on at night, it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction. It's going to automatically dim those back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically then bounce it back up to high beams. So, very convenient feature there, kind of like uh, the automatic headlights. But for the high beam so big fan of that but another one here this didn't always used to be the case led fog lights do come standard on every single trim level across the board and again led fog lights so you gotta love that and of course you got the adaptive cruise control sensor found just below that toyota logo up front as well so overall i believe we've all seen this look before it definitely looks good and again i absolutely love the hood scoop on our particular trim that we have with us here today but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the forerunner all right and so but now since we are around to the side of this one roof rails do come standard across the board we do have an optional roof rack actually up there as well trd roof rack though does come standard on the trd pro but like i said you can get the roof rack on the other trims it's just going to be optional rear privacy glass is going to come standard of course across the board you got the trim level badging found on the c pillar i actually like that look so if you're ever curious what trim level you were looking at and you're looking at a forerunner maybe on a sunday look at that c pillar ours is going to say trd sport of course because that's a trim that we have but every trim is going to tell you so i'm a big fan of that body color power adjustable side mirrors of course they will be heated with led integrated turn signals if you go with the sr5 premium trim level and up so that's how you're going to get the led integrated turn signals there running boards are going to be optional for all trim levels we do have those i believe they run right around 800 dollars give or take taking a look down at the wheel configuration 20 inch alloys for the trd sport and again that's what you guys are looking at right now but essentially 17 inch alloys for all the other trim levels including that 40th anniversary edition so we do have uh one of the bigger sized wheels so that is pretty cool but anyways that about rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so but now since we are around to the back of the forerunner all the way to the top you guys can probably see that there is a body color shark fin antenna up there just below that rear window wiper with an integrated brake light in case you were curious hey where's the rear window wiper of course since the rear window actually does open and close the rear window wiper is going to be tucked away 
underneath of that rear spoiler. So that is where you're gonna go ahead and find that because again, you can't put it on that actual glass because the actual glass opens and closes. So that is why that is there. But anyways, LED taillights do come standard across the board. And you guys can see we do have the tow hitch down below there. Towing capacity is going to come in at 5,000 pounds even in case you were curious. And of course, to the uh, down below on the passenger side, there's a little cutout for it. There is a single exhaust outlet there. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. So but now since we are around to the back of the forerunner when it comes to opening that rear tailgate it is a manual tailgate for all trim levels across the board once opened up though cargo capacity behind the third row yes there is an optional third row available for the forerunner that is going to be nine cubic feet but most forerunners that you find are not going to have that that's something kind of that you have to request and very rarely will you see them but anyways I think I actually re reviewed one last year or the year before, I forget, but anyways, behind that second row, 47.2 cubic feet, and with all rows folded, 89.7 cubic feet. I wanna emphasize that because that is more cargo space overall than the Highlander, than the Palisade, than the Pathfinder, than the Telluride, than the Pilot, pretty much all the other competing three row SUVs. So that is a ton of space in the back for the forerunner. You could probably take this thing camping and sleep back there if you wanted to. Put in the comments if you've done that and you own a forerunner. But anyways, 12 volt power outlet you could find back there, but not just that. All trim levels, but the 40th anniversary edition for whatever reason is gonna give you a 120 volt power outlet back there. So when you're camping, you can plug in a toaster and have some toast in the morning and orange juice. I don't know, but that is sticky cool that that is back there. I'm a big fan of that. Grocery bag hooks back there, tie down anchors as well. And then there will be an optional cargo cover if you wanted to go that route as well. But then making our way up to the third row legroom, we don't have it, so I can't show it to you guys, but 29.3 inches, so not a ton of space back there, but there are gonna be cup holders and some storage for those third row passengers if you didn't end up going with that option. But second row legroom, that is going to come in at 32.9 inches for reference. I mean, even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there doesn't sound like a whole heck of a lot of legroom on paper but quite honestly it wasn't that bad i was able to make it work rear ventilation does come standard of course for the second row passengers there are dual rear usb charging ports coming standard as well and some front seat bat map netted pockets i guess is how i'm going to describe them so that is going to be available then as well but now let's go ahead and make our way up to the front seats eight-way power driver's seat with power lumbar and a cloth finish comes standard but for the sr5 premium trd pro trd offer premium trd sport that we have today in the 40th anniversary edition essentially that's all going to give you a soft tex upholstery or more or less a leatherette finish so heated front seats though coming with all of those trims as well and a power adjustable passenger seat again Again, for all trim levels of those as well, except for the just basic SR5. But anyways, perforated leather is gonna come with a limited trim level, and that's also gonna give you ventilated front seats. Overall, in our uh, TRD Sport that we have today, seating was plenty comfortable. Again, the power adjustment seats make it super easy, and they adjust pretty quick too, quicker than most other vehicles that I test. I like the TRD uh, badging or emblem found in the headrest too. I thought that was a nice added touch. But then, let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel. It's tilt and telescope, and it is leather wrapped for all trim levels across the board 10 and 2 grips are plenty thick so i'm a big fan of that as well and you can actually get a heated steering wheel that is going to be optional although it doesn't come standard but it is optional on the forerunner as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got a pretty basic key actually toyota logo on the one side when you flip it over just lock and unlock so good news about a basic key is when you lose it in ocean city maryland uh it's not going to cost much to replace so i'll just say that <laughs> but anyways it is all keyless entry with the push button start for all trim levels across the board so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located kind of just by the driver's right knee and so once started up tachometer is all the way to your left speedometer is on your right there is a small digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display there are steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel that gives you things like a digital speedometer trip a trip b of course how many miles you have left until you hit empty that's always convenient you got a steering angle up there that is pretty cool when you need your next oil change there's some safety features the list goes on so 
pretty much everything you could possibly want up there so it's fine it'll get the job done then touching on overall interior quality if you wanted a power moonroof that we don't have today go with the limited trd pro or the 40th anniversary edition so 40th anniversary will give you a power moonroof that's pretty cool overhead sunglass holder though will come standard across the board dual zoom climate control for the limited and trd pro trims home light controls for the premium trim levels and up and that is actually going to be found on the the roof here as opposed to just underneath the rear view mirror where it typically is often found but one two three it's up to three different garage doors kind of right around the led interior lighting up top there wood trim accents can be found on the limited uh just above the passenger side glove box otherwise you're going to get this kind of cool texturized black look just above the passenger side glove box there overall it is kind of finished on the basic side of things but then again that's kind of what i expected in a vehicle like the forerunner it's kind of known for reliability it's known for off-roading and it's known for getting the job done and a lot of practicality and a lot of cool little quirky features like the rear window that opens up so there's not a ton going on with interior quality. There's a cup holder just in front of the shifter. You got a USB connection port for your Android Auto Apple CarPlay. I'll touch on that in a second. A rapid charging port for a dual USB rapid charging ports. Kind of a finished with some LED blue lighting inside of that. That is pretty cool. Got a little bit of storage to put your cell phone there. Another cup holder behind the shifter. You got TRD lettering on the actual shift knob itself since we have the TRD Sport within the center armrest. A ton of space in there. You got 12 volt power outlet and on the back side of the center armrest, a little place to put your uh, pens or pencils and a little container for your tissues because it says tissue on there. So you are only allowed to put tissues in there. So overall, again, it's on the basic side, but it'll get the job done. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen. Eight inch color touchscreen display is gonna come standard for all trim levels across the board. Bluetooth audio streaming coming standard, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. If you want a factory navigation system, go with the SR5 premium trim level and up. You're gonna get some weather information you could display up there. And also of course your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there's a couple of them. Eight speakers is going to come with the SR5 40th anniversary TRD Off-Road and TRD Pro. Essentially all trims but the Limited. I should have just said that because the Limited is going to give you a 15 speaker JBL sound system with the subwoofer and an external amp. But having said that, that is not the one we have today. We do have the eight speaker sound system with us here. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. It's okay it's it's just okay it's not the best sound system i ever heard but it should be plenty fine obviously if you wanted a little better sound system and you're really into music go with the limited trim level but it's just an okay sound system i've heard better eight speaker sound systems than that i'll put it that way but last thing i want to mention you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the forerunner in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board but not only that there is an optional 360 degree monitor available we do have that option giving you that bird's eye view from the top letting you know who or what is behind you and all around you which is always it's going to lead us into safety and so front side side current airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well you don't always find that in the back you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door docks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard for all trim levels will be toyota safety sense and so that is going to include a pre-collision system with the pedestrian detection lane departure alert dynamic radar cruise control and that automatic high beams i had already mentioned to you guys but then the limited is also going to give you front and rear parking sensors then as well and so overall when it comes to my final thoughts of the forerunner this thing is an off-road beast you can certainly equip it that way and really if you were to go to a beach let's say and you look at all the vehicles on the beach that are off-road vehicles you typically will see trucks jeep wranglers and forerunners so those are the three that i typically see when i go to Aztec Island. So this thing is plenty capable off-road. It's plenty capable on the beach as well. Not only that, you have unbeatable reliability. Literally, take a look at Consumer Reports. I'm not lying here. You have the best reliability of any other SUVs out there just about. Maybe the Highlander and this is tied. I don't know, but this thing is incredible reliability for sure. Plenty of cargo space as well. I know the Telluride comes in at 88 cubic feet. Highlander, I think is like 87. Uh, Pilot is 84 cubic feet. So really more space than all of its competition and more off-road capable and more reliable as well. So I just wanted to say that. 
I'd get the TRD sport trim that we have today personally because you have that hood scoop, which I think looks absolutely amazing. And you have the X-ray suspension, which is also pretty nice. Rear window is great. That's one of those features you typically don't find on any other SUVs out there. So really the, uh, I would say two things for room for improvement. So fuel economy obviously is not gonna be as good as the competition. This is a very old engine, a five speed transmission. It's not turbocharged. It's not a hybrid powertrain like Toyota sometimes does with a lot of their other vehicles. So fuel economy is not the best, but it's not built for that either. And honestly, I wouldn't have minded a little bit quicker of an acceleration because it is kind of on the slower side. But then again, it's reliable. So that's what really matters, right? But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the 4Runner in the comment section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.